Is trail magic bad? Was a question that I posed through an Instagram poll as well as here on YouTube through my community tab. Overwhelmingly, backpackers responded by saying no, trail magic isn't bad. However, there was a small fraction that responded with yes. My name is Tara, otherwise known as Candy Mama, and originally I was making a video about how to host a memorable trail magic. When I through hiked, I loved coming upon any and all team mag, so much so that I hosted my own several times. In my research for the intended video, I came across a article with a hot take from somebody who thought trail magic was bad. I couldn't imagine anyone thinking something so beneficial and kind could be bad. I became curious and down a rabbit hole I went reading up on articles, forums, and reddit threads by those who condemn the practice of hiker feeds and who adamantly avoid calling it trail magic. Keep in mind that trail magic means different things to different people, but in this video I will be using it in the context of trail angels feeding hikers at trailheads. A small fraction of people believe that TMAG can negatively impact a hiker's experience, the environment, the local wildlife, trail culture, while also finding it pointless compared to other forms of trail magic. Though it seems anyone can have a hot take about anything these days, I decided to seriously research this idea of trail magic being not beneficial. And though I'm not completely on board with this idea, I do understand some troubles with trail magic. But possibly a more important conversation to be had is about the crowding on the AT. Since popular books and movies about the AT came out and with the emerging presence of through hiking on social media, we are seeing a uptick in people backpacking the trail. Some issues with trail magic can be directly correlated with large amounts of hikers, but honestly that is another topic for another day. It is so loaded and I will not be diving into that today. I will take y'all with me as I analyze the perceived issues with trail magic, how it can go wrong, and then finish up with some tips on how to host a low impact, LNT abiding, awesome trail magic. So let's jump right in. At the core of trail magic, we find people offering kindness to others. But even with good intentions, some TMAG situations can create negative outcomes. This is the case when it comes to trail angels or hikers who don't adhere to leave no trace principles. Personally, I don't remember seeing a messy trail magic or one that was negatively impacting the surrounding areas, but it's also possible I was so giddy with excitement because there's trail magic and a full spread of food in front of me that I didn't notice. Personally, I never saw that, but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. There are backpackers on the Appalachian Trail who confidently remember moments of disregard for LNT by those at hosted TMAG. One person commented on a post of mine saying, it's become such a huge strange thing that it's no longer magic, it's rarely LNT. Even if my friends or I didn't come into contact with any trail magic that didn't adhere to LNT or was poorly hosted, Again, like I said before, that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. This type of trail magic can go wrong when and if trash and debris is left. Also, large hiker feeds can create large, unsustainable hiker bubbles and even clog up trailheads. Conservancy groups of the AT advise against large hiker feeds because it can cause the creation of new campsites or even overwhelm existing sites. Lastly, Congregations of people centralized in one area has the potential to damage the surrounding environment. Another problem can arise when a backpacker is relying on trail magic as a food source. When I asked my Instagram followers if trail magic was bad, some relayed stories of encountering hikers who restocked with the thought that they were going to encounter hiker feeds. So essentially they were buying less food thinking that at least one day, maybe two days, they would be seeing a hiker feed and getting some of their food source from that. Though I never met or encountered a hiker like this, I can only imagine how irresponsible and unsafe that is. As my friends at Happy Go London's put it, trail magic should be a gift, but not expected. Pack enough food. Another way that trail magic can go wrong is through the spread of illnesses and viruses. Norovirus runs rampant on the trail 
and just add in some dirty hikers who haven't washed their hands in a couple of days and they're sharing food, they're sharing you know drinks and facilities, that can accelerate the spread. Before doing research for this video, I understood food and drink caches to be a type of trail magic that no one should ever do. I think most would agree, and I don't really feel the need to explain, to fully explain why leaving unattended food or drink on trail is a bad idea, but I'll explain it anyways. Though it's a nice gesture, this act can actually create a lot of issues. A cooler bag full of goodies attracts hikers, but also animals. If an animal gets into the bag, cooler, or trash, that is spreading unnecessary mess in the environment, as well as causing a ripple effect where animals associate these trailheads with humans and with food. Personally, I have seen a trashy cache left ransacked by an unsupervised hiker. They probably saw an opportunity to empty all their trash, believing that somebody would be by soon to pick it up. The added trash and the food that's already there can further draw wildlife to the area of that cache. A frequently visited water cache is the only provision that I believe is okay and super helpful during those hot summer months. Before we go any further, if you guys are enjoying the video, please consider subscribing. It only takes a click on y'all's end to help and encourage creators like me as always, thank you for the support. I also have social media. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook to participate in more backpacker polls or just see some adventurous content. Thanks, y'all. Like I mentioned at the beginning, trail magic has a lot of different definitions. It means different things to different people. Though the word has become synonymous with setting up tables of food, and feeding hikers, there are a lot of other ways to perform trail magic without feeding hikers. If you are looking to give back, first consider these alternatives to nourishing hikers. You can give free rides to and from town, pay a hiker's tab at a restaurant, provide a free place for hikers to sleep, shower, or do laundry, donate to a local trail crew, volunteer with a trail maintenance crew, pack out trash that may accumulate on trail or at shelters. Now let's talk about how to host a amazingly awesome, low impact, LNT abiding, memorable trail magic and avoid anything else that might go wrong. My first tip is to offer food in person instead of leaving caches. It's much more fun to meet hikers that you're eating and it also reduces any chances of litter and any issues with wildlife. I asked past through hikers what they love to see at Trail Magic, and generally they said anything fresh like fruit, veggies, any meats, breads. Typically when you're on trail, it is difficult to bring along those fresh foods, so being able to provide that for hikers is extra special. If you are looking for a good list of recommendations, you can pause the video here. I have a bunch that I've compiled from past and present through hikers. I know everybody knows this, but I wouldn't feel right not saying it. Just be aware of any trash or litter that might be accumulating and leave the area that you set up at better than when you found it. Avoid publicizing a hiker feed on social media or far out. This can create an unsustainable hiker bubble that may negatively impact the surrounding area. My next recommendation is to set up a hand washing station where hikers can properly wash their hands before they get any food or drink. Not only will this prevent the spread of viruses or illnesses, but it's also really nice as a hiker to wash your hands after being on trail for a couple days. Something that I forgot to do when I was at Trail Magic was to offload my trash that's in my pack that I've accumulated from the previous days backpacking. So that's something that you can do. You could just offer while they're there at the trail magic, you could offer for them to offload their trash for you to throw away. Even though the best trail magic was the unexpected ones in the back country, avoid hosting in remote or wilderness areas. Instead, try hosting TMAG at large and established parking areas. These are far easier to get to and it's better to let the wilderness remain wild. Hosting trail magic in remote areas leaves a greater impact on the land than usual. We experienced a high concentration of hiker feeds early on in our through hike, mostly in Georgia. 
If it is your desire to host Team Edge where it is least expected, consider doing it further into the trail. I don't know, maybe closer to Virginia. By then, hikers have racked up quite the appetite so they can really put down some food. This way you can provide food and drink for unexpected hikers while not leaving a greater impact on the land. Keep in mind that we saw a lot less team edge in the northern states, so this is a great opportunity to offer a hiker feed to any Sobo hikers, any Nobos that are kind of nearing the end of their hike, or flip-floppers. Quick note, if you're a backpacker, please pack enough food and do not rely on trail magic as a food source. Quick tip. Is trail magic all good or all bad? Of course not. Like anything in this world, there are pros and cons. Personally, I think it has way more pros. The trail magic train has left the station, and I don't believe hiker feeds are going to become any less prevalent. But with consideration and intentionality, we can serve hikers while minimizing any negative outcomes. Like I mentioned at the beginning, a conversation about the crowding on the AT is valid and probably should happen. I think the amount of people that are on trail possibly has a bigger impact than trail magic. I might make a video about this topic, but it's pretty deep. If you'd like to watch a video about that, please let me know in the comment sections. I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on what I talked about today. Do you agree that trail magic is bad? Do you agree that it's all good? Tell me what you think. Let's have a respectful conversation in the comments below. Usually with these videos, I have my watchers who, you know, get to the very end of a video comment an emoji to let me know that they watched towards the end. I'm going to do something a little different. If you did watch the end, please comment the emoji of a food or drink that you have always dreamed of seeing at a Hosted Trail Magic. Commenting this emoji will let me know, again, that you watched the end, and I will say hello in the comments. That is all for right now, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye!